All right. Okay. So let's uh, uh, let's put a little bit of a mathematical framework on on top of what we have been doing here. So so in general, when you see finite elements, it it is usually constructed upon a weak form of a differential equation. And uh, the definition of weak form in general, we have derived a specific weak form before. And uh, a weak form is always like A of U. Um, what letter did we use for the test function? G plus L of G is equal to 0. OK? And uh, 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 the weak form is always stating that where u has to be in some space x u and uh, uh, l let me use this uh, weakly x to denote general infinite dimensional function spaces and use the regular big x to denote finite dimensional ones and g is in some function x g so in general these two spaces does not have to agree with it with each other but like uh, there is a specific very popular set of uh, uh, finite element methods called the Galerkin methods in which the space of U is identical with the space of G so that is what we did in the Poisson's equation case right where after this uh, uh, we deliberately did the integration by parts so that we get the same order of differentiation on the solution u and on the test function g, right? They both become first order. The highest derivatives in both becomes first order. And then we can say that, okay, let's force them to be in the same space. That makes the final element pretty nice to deal with. So uh, we will we'll basically be only talking about the Gerlke methods here, right? So, so there are um, more, the, the non-Galicki methods are more advanced and uh, we, we don't really have time to talk about it in this, uh, in this lecture. But using Galicki methods, you can already solve a lot of problems. And then, both of these spaces needs to be, uh, I shouldn't say needs to be, but like uh, for most differential equations, you can choose these spaces to be a certain Sobolev space. So what is a Sobolev space? So Sobolev space um, is the, the simplest Sobolev space is actually L2. So L2 is the space of f for which the integral, so L2 of over a specific domain, let me write it like this, L2 over a specific domain, is f such that integration of omega f squared dx is less than infinity. Okay. So for all functions that are we call square integrable, this is the L2 space. So square integrable functions does not have to be bounded. In the sense that, for example, if you have, if omega is the interval 0 to 1, if this is my omega, right, is equal to the, the interval not including these two endpoints, then you can construct functions like this. They go to infinity at zero and at zero and one. And depending on how fast they go to infinity, this function can either be within the L2 space or not. Alright? So if it goes to infinity quite fast, it may not be in the L2 space. For example, if you have one over square root of x over the left hand side, uh, when you try to integrate it, it won't be finite. So you won't get any, uh, so, so this function is not going to be in L2 space. But if you have one over, let's say, um, what's, what's, a, what's a slower uh, function that goes to infinity? Yeah, like uh, x cubed, right? So, so then we can have a function that does integrate to finite quantities. Right. Okay, you can work out the math yourself. <laughs> All right. So, 
uh, and uh, uh, similar things happens if you have an infinite domain. If you have an infinite domain, it's actually the opposite. The, the faster you go to, uh, the, you, you actually need to a function that goes to zero sufficiently fast. So for, for, this, uh, uh, for the function to be L2. So this is the simplest uh, soft, left, soft left space. But there are also more important soft left space, for, exa for example, H1. And H1 is the functions for which not only has to be square, uh, the square has to be integrable, also the derivative in general, the gradient squared has to be integrable. So this is the kind of space we want to choose, for example, for Poisson's equation. For actually not only for Poisson's equation, for most of the functions that are, um, for most of the PDs that involve second order derivatives, usually this space is sufficient, right? This is why finite element uses this weak form. Even though the differential equation contains second order derivatives, we are deliberately choosing a space which doesn't even require the function to be second uh, order differentiable. But then you may encounter differential equations involving, for example, third or fourth order derivatives. You may have to go to H2, which is the functions that, okay, so first of all, f is in H1, right? That means the function has to be square integrable, the derivative has to be square integrable, and also the, se uh, the second order derivatives has to be square integrable. And uh, uh, you, can, you can define hn the same way, right? So basically, the up to nth derivative has to be all square integrable. But like uh, here, we mostly focus on h1. So only requires the function and its derivative to be square integrable. OK, so once you have this, it becomes it, it, we have the appropriate mathematical space to define any weak form. So, so if I have if I have this space, and then I have a, a of any function u g plus l of g is equal to zero, we get a weak form, and we can routinely apply whatever finite element method to this weak form. So I don't actually care what differential equation comes from, right? But if you can perform all kinds of integration by parts, mostly integration by parts, uh, to derive a function, a bilinear form A and a linear functional L to get me this form, then the rest is basically routine, right? Apply the finite element methods. And the only difference is that if my A is different, then the matrices has to be different, right? So because when, when, I, when I substitute the basis functions into my A, I'm going to get different numbers. So and I solve the matrix, I get, get different uh, uh, solutions. But like uh, all this procedure is going to be exactly the same. So in the project that is uh, going to be posted today, we'll have a different equation than the Poisson's equation. It's also second order, right? But like uh, it, it'll be your task to figure out what is the bilinear form A, what is the linear functional L, and uh, derive what the matrices should be.